was writing my book, I was trying to, to write a different type of history. I call it a tactile history because it, I tried to trace the psychological and, and uh, physical reactions to being occupied or to being an occupier. Every Paris household had a map where they tracked, and you read about this all the time, where they tracked the, the progress of the Russians and the Allies, and, and, and they would, they would, somebody would hear something from a cousin who just came from some place and it said they're there, and that, they put it together that way. Uh, they generally believed the BBC, and the BBC was generally, um, uh, uh, not neutral, but what, um, objective, which is generally very objective. Um, but they, they, that's why it took so long for the news to get back about the Jews being murdered. It took forever. They tried to hide that. It took forever. But it came back because some Jews escaped, some Jews heard, some people had seen the Jews being taken away to the, uh, to the crematory, et cetera. Would get, the word would get back, but it, was, it never came back in a way that... Um, it never came back in a way that, 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 that could be seen as certain. It was always a myth. There was no official policy which said, and we see what's happening to our Jewish brothers and sisters, and that's another reason we've got to fight the enemy. Most Jewish men by this time were not spending night at home. They were spending nights out, um, hiding, because they thought they were just arresting men. Most of the people rounded up that day were little uh, children. And, um, and, and, and uh, mothers and women. There were many suicides. Women threw their children out the window and they followed them. There were terrible stories about kids being off in school and coming home and finding their apartments already uh, locked and forbidden to enter. But sometimes the curfew would be midnight. Sometimes it'd be nine o'clock. Everybody had to constantly read the paper. There was a lot of resistance at the beginning, but very disorganized, ineffectual resistance. Cutting of telephone lines, cutting of electrical lines, tracks like the one I, I, read, uh, uh, I read to you, um, mimeograph tracks. Um, a mimeograph machine was a very valuable tool, but it made a lot of noise, so they had to find a place where they could do it. Because if you've ever heard one of those things, you know, clack, 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 they knew immediately. Um, not much violent resistance. They didn't have arms. The Germans were brilliantly capable of keeping arms out, even up to the liberation. There were very few arms in Paris. Very little organization. De Gaulle did not trust the resistance. He thought that the resistance was made up primarily of communists, and the communists were the best organized, but they couldn't do anything for a year because, they, because Russia had a peace treaty with Germany. And it wasn't until Germans, uh, Russia, and Germany invaded Russia in 1941 that the Communist Party could finally begin to fight against the uh, Germans, which they did. And they were very, very well organized. And uh, um, de Gaulle was petrified that the communists were going to take over France and, and that he and his idea of France would, would, would be uh, uh, sidelined. 